we have the manual for the more Siemens 353 controller. We're looking at a lead lag function block, and we have programmed this controller to do nothing but the lead lag function. It used to be a full PID controller, but we've bypassed all the PID functions. We only have a lead lag block. We have an analog input right here. It's a potentiometer connected to analog input number one. We have fed that analog input signal into the input of the lead lag block, so we can now set the lead and lag time constants, and the output of this lead lag block now goes to the output scale on the controller. So my potentiometer, my analog input, reads on the P bar graph. My output of the lead lag block reads on the valve bar graph. So presently, we're going to take a look at what the lead lag settings are. I'm going to enter configuration, step down, I'll go over to edit function block, step down. I'll go into lead leg, step down. My time leg is currently 0.05 minutes, which is three seconds. I'll step up, go over to time lead. That's also set to 0.05 minutes or three seconds. So we have an equal lead and lag times. I'm going to exit configuration. Knowing that the lead and lag times are equal to each other means this lead lag function block should simply pass the signal right on through. Whatever step change I put on the input, I should get directly on the output. So let's see. I'll put my hand on the potentiometer. I focus here on the bar graphs. We should see the P bar graph and the valve bar graph go directly in proportion to each other. No time delays, no tricks. Whatever goes in comes out. That's a pretty boring lead lag block. So now we enter configuration, I step down, I'm going to edit that block. And what I'm going to say here is I want the lead time to now be zero. I'm going to turn it all the way down to zero and store that value. So now it has a lag time of 0.05 minutes, a lead time of nothing. So it's nothing but lag at this point. I'm going to exit. Now when I move the potentiometer up and down, we should see a lag function. So watch as I move the potentiometer up. You see the process variable bar graph spike up and the valve settles into its new value. It's climbing like an RC time constant function. If I move it down, we see a sudden spike on the P bar graph and the valve bar graph slowly settles in, asymptotically settles into its lower value. That's a pure lag function right there. So the output is lagging behind the input, a first order lag. What I'm going to do now is go back into my lead lag function block and modify it one more time. I'm going to step into configuration, step down. I'm going to edit my lead lag block. This time, I'm going to crank in some more lead time. I'm going to go 0.1 minutes, which is 6 seconds. Now recall that the lag time was 0.05 minutes. So I've got a six second lead and a three second leg. So now the lead exceeds the leg. It should predominantly act like a lead controller now. I'll exit out of this. Now what we expect to see is when I turn the potentiometer, we expect to see a step change in my P bar graph. My valve will spike up and then settle to its new value or spike down and then settle to its new value. So watch as I increase the process variable. It spikes up and then it settles into its new value. Now I'll decrease the process variable. It spikes down, and then it comes and settles up. So again, every time I move my process input, I get a spike on the output, and then it settles. Every time I move the process input, I get a spike on the output, and then it settles. That is a lead function. If I were to go back and adjust my lead and lag times uh, relative to each other, I'll get varying degrees of lead or lag, depending on which one is bigger. And again, if lead time is equal to lag time, it simply passes a signal through with no time function at all. That's it.